This is a Pinball News production. So we'll start with everything going on, guys. Where's Butch? Butch is in New Mexico right now. Um, given the, given everything that's going on and everything that happened, um, Monday afternoon I had to change gears, guys. Um, I'll start with this. We'll go through this in case anyone wants to get up and thinks I'm boring. Um, we tried like hell to bring the next title here for you guys. Um, we fell just a hair short. So Monday afternoon, I had to tell Butch we're going to pull back on it. Um, I came with to, I came with through together a different, totally different presentation, totally different slideshow, totally different everything to, to talk to you guys about where we've been. But of course, I'm also going to tell you where we're going. So, you know, just kind of, that's why Butch is not here. Um, that and then the heightened state that, unfortunately, the heightened state of COVID, I wasn't going to expose him to any potential because Butch is a godsend in the pinball industry. We all love Butch. And I'm not going to subject anybody to anything, you know, unless I need to at this time. Except myself. Me, I'll travel all day long, twice on Sundays. So, well, I guess we kind of talked about that COVID-19. Um... You know, delays, it did push us back a little bit on development, guys. Um, as many of you guys know, Illinois was kind of, well, Illinois is Illinois. But they pushed us back because they shut down our plant. Everyone was not allowed in the building for about eight weeks, eight to ten weeks. So a lot of us were working remotely, but it's affected us because with parts and staff and everything else, it's not just us that's not in the building, it's our people that we're buying our parts from it's the guys doing our prototyping it's the engineers it's everybody we deal with it's been a domino effect so it's really played into this game that we're doing and it's paid into all of our games that we're building now um there is chip shortages out there i'm not going to sit here and buffalo it those are there metal shortages part shortages there's a lot of things you can't get right now things that used to be two three week items to get in now you're looking anywhere three to six months. So it's really kind of a, it's a new supply chain to manage, guys. So, um, but there's some good news in all that. All right, here's who we are, guys. As many of you guys know, for the last year, we also deal in a lot of home arcade stuff. Most of my Chicago gaming pinball dealers do sell our home arcade stuff, including our Arcade Legends 3. It's got 150 games on it, Golden Tee Golf. Yeah, great home arcade product. We also do the anniversary edition, home edition of the Ms. Pat Galaga. Um, we've seen, in, during COVID, we've seen tremendous surge in all the home arcade stuff also. Um, it's been keeping us pretty busy just doing that. We brought back our Supercade over the last year, plays 55 games, has an LCD screen in it now versus the old CRT monitor. So it's really kind of state of the art. Now let's get to pinball. Because I think everyone here, is anyone here just for arcade stuff? I mean, I can go back and elaborate on that. Or are we all pinball guys? Okay. So, as you know, we started with Medieval, okay? You know, back years ago, we entered a venture with Planetary Pinball and decided we're going to go out there and remake one of the greatest games of all time, Medieval Madness. I don't think anybody expected the firestorm that came with that. Is literally, that game sold out before, that, before they finished that seminar, that game was sold out. So let's go over Medieval. We did a thousand limited editions, then we did a thousand standard editions. Okay, we brought forth that HD high dot color display, the color kit for medieval. Okay, kind of one of the big technology innovations. We redrew every frame of the animation in high definition dots, so it really comes to life on that one. Um, then we came back out, we did Attack from Mars, okay? We did a thousand limited editions, we did the special edition, and then we did the classic edition. This is the first time we did the three tiers. 
okay? Limited edition sold out. Um, I think JJ still has one available in his house if you need one or something. Anyway, um, but we brought, we brought forth the innovative um, Martian Topper on that one. You know, where it's interactive with the game. How many of you guys have played the attack? How many of you guys own one? How many of you guys want to sell it? No? JJ does, okay. So that topper really kind of kicked off what I will call the topper game. Before that, they were all kind of laser cut acrylic. That one became interactive with the game. Um, you know, how many times have you been sitting downstairs in your game room, upstairs in your game room, and that, and that Martian just starts jumping on you? I know it's enough to scare little kids. So, and then the other innovation we brought in a tank from Mars was the extra large, extra large display, okay? It really brought the game to life in the new era. Now I have to say this, guys, you guys have really helped bring the innovation out. Uh, when we started with Medieval, it was literally, it had to be painstakingly accurate to what the original game was. So it was, we, we spent hours and hours and hours of research to find the exact color spectrum for a warm white LED to emulate an incandescent light bulb. Um, you know, just the attention to detail that went into everything. This is the first one where we brought in the cool white LEDs. We brought in everything. And you guys loved it. And I appreciate that. We get the Monster Bash. We did 1,250 50 limited editions. We still did our special edition, our classic edition. This one here for some of the things we brought to the game in this game. Not only did we have the XL display, we had the highly decorated topper that came with it. We brought in the RGB interactive lighting, which how many of you guys own a monster? How many of you guys still own a monster? How many of you guys want to sell it? All right, at the end of the show, we're auctioning JJ off. Um, but again, we saw what you guys wanted. We listened to what the crowd said. We want, we want these features. We want the upgrades. We want this stuff. Um, so we, we keep bringing it to you guys. You know, these titles have been gold titles. They are the holy grails in most pinball people's collection, whether it's the original Williams or the remake. It's literally what people have been looking for. And we try and deliver it at a great value price. Then we went nuts. And we decided, you know what, let's bring Medieval Madness back. Except we brought all the technology we've learned through Attack from Mars and Monster Bash and decided to integrate it into Medieval Madness with the Royal Edition. How many guys own one of those? Okay. How many of you guys want to sell it? Okay, again, JJ's for sale. Um, I am going to confirm to you we did 378 Royals. Okay, that is all of the Royal Edition that will ever be made is those 378 games. We did do something else with Medieval where we offered everybody the ability to take of the 2000 original games, you can buy the kits you want and make the game exactly what you want. But there's only 378 Royals that will ever be made. So those people who have one, you're one of 378 people that have them. And that includes mine that's still in the showroom. So there's 377 in the wild. But we also did the special edition and the classic edition. We brought it back to what is the core of what we do. The three models. You know, if you don't need everything, you can get, you know, the special edition, which has some of the features, but not all the features. Or if you like the original Williams classic look, you can go with our classic edition. So what goes into a Chicago gaming remake? Too many people think that we just go out and literally buy parts off a shelf and look at one and put it together. It's anything but that. Uh, we literally are reinventing lost craftsmanship. Okay, so 
we buy a game, we study it, we dismantle it, we put it back together, we dismantle it again, we try and find any drawings that are left through, um, through the Williams archives, uh, if they're there, then literally we have to verify that drawing versus what's out there. You know, in the 90s, they didn't use the technology we're using today, so there's no file structure. So literally, we've opened up cabinets that are supposed to be something in the WPC line, and we found Pinball 2000 cabinets in there. It's, it's nuts because there's no file structure in there. So literally, we have to take what we have, look at it, look for any drawings that are there, verify the drawings are exactly what went in the game because there are 75 different revisions of the same cabinet or the same part. And you gotta see what's out there. And most, a lot of times those do not exist, the final revision, mm -hmm. because they were destroyed afterwards. You know, the game's done. They're not gonna remake that game. The drawings were lost, they were stolen, they were archived wrong, they were whatever. Then we go into our prototyping, where literally we figure out exactly what drawing it is, we've redrawn it into today's technology, we send it out for prototyping. Then we look at it, see if it's exactly what's gonna work in today's era. One of the things we look at on every one of these games is the fact that through time, we have been able to see the fail points of games. How many of you guys don't know Williams Medieval Madness? Okay, we got one. <laughs> That's okay. Have you ever had to replace the gears in the drawbridge? It is a very time consuming and tedious job. So in the last run of Medieval Madness, one of the things we did is we redid that entire mech to use a direct drive motor, use modern technology, to get rid of the gear train, to give you more reliability, more fun, more everything as you go through. This way it's less likely to break, it's less likely to be down. That's one of the things we keep trying to do as we go through is improve what's there if it needs it. If it's perfect the way it is, hey, we leave it alone. Playfields. As we've said, we are one of, we, actually I think we are the only manufacturer where everything walks in as raw wood. From our cabinets to our playfields to everything, they come in as raw wood. One end of the factory is literally trucks of wood coming in and the other end is pinball machines going out. Um, so literally what you see there is blanks. Um, literally, those have been CNC routered. Everything's been done with them, but it is stacks of blanks getting ready to be processed. We pound our inserts in by hand, guys. Everything we do is done in that same craftsmanship that were done in the original pinball machines. And I believe it shows in what we do. Um, that's my theory, but you guys tell me, does it show? Yeah. Okay. You know, literally, we're just pounding inserts. We got ladies back there just, that's their job, pound inserts in. Then they're sanded, then they're finished. We still screen our play fields. We do not digitally print. So we still hand silk screen every one of our play fields. For all you people that own a Monster Bash, that's one of the green screens from Monster Bash. Okay, so every color you see on Monster Bash, Medieval, Attack from Mars, that's literally a screen where somebody, and there's the black screen, where somebody literally is using that contraption right there. Okay, putting the screen down over the play field, putting, putting ink in there, and literally pulling the squeegee back and forth across every play field, guys. So every play field is unique. Every play field is a, pretty much a handmade work of art because it varies on the pressure of things like that. You know, every play field is literally hand done. Inserts hand pounded, everything is, you know, as you see. Um, I kind of give you a sneak peek here. I took a lot of pictures at night when no one was paying attention to bring to you guys. Um, <laughs> So this is a stack of play fields with just white screens on them. Okay, getting ready for the next set of screens. Monster Bash had 14 screens. Um, 
if any one of them was wrong, the play field was junk. So literally it was scrapped. It was sanded back down. If we could use it again, we used it again. If not, well, they kind of became, you know, all sorts of other sawdust. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is a current run of games with just the white screen on the play fields. I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag on this one. Um, that's play fields that are ready for our next production run. Woo! Um, I've got over 850 play fields screened, guys. We're, we are ready to go. Okay? There's more of them sitting there. By the way, the first two pictures were also play fields that are ready to go to. Um, <laughs> There's a set of light boards. We check every light board, every play field goes through that jig. All the lights are fired to make sure that we don't have any inserts that are ghosting, make sure there's no problems, make sure the inserts light correctly, things like that. I, I think that's Monster Bash, but I'm not quite sure. Anyone know any different? No? Okay. I took it at night, so I'm not quite sure which game that is. You know. As I said, guys, these, we're moving forward. My line is working. We're building games. Okay? We are building games. Again, I took that picture the other night. I think... Tuesday night, I got on a plane for Thursday. I took these pictures Tuesday night at about 7 o'clock at night. Turn the lights on. Those are um, games you were making this past week? Huh? Those are games you were making this past week? These are games that are on my line currently right now. We are moving forward, guys. Um, different shot, different angle. Play field boards are in some of them. Play, you know, we are moving forward, guys. We are ready to go. Some of the technology we've done, kind of going over it with you. Our XLCD, we've done the RGB integrated elimination. We brought forth the Playfield PCBs. Now, a lot of you guys own, own Chicago Gaming. Have you guys had problems with the Playfield PCBs? Anyone? Okay. Good. We brought the interactive toppers. It seems everyone likes those. Um, I guess I'll talk about something new coming up. Um, <coughs> We have completely redesigned our pinball operating system from the ground up during COVID, okay? So gone on new titles from the next title forward, gone are the hold the green button to get into the super secret Chicago gaming menu. And if you're not part of the club that knows about it, well, you just don't know about it. We've integrated the Chicago gaming menu into the Williams style menu so now you can easily access your coils, you can easily diagnose things, you can check your lights, you can check everything, okay? By doing that, it also gave us the ability to write new code in the games. So we can now improve light shows, we can improve a lot in the games now itself. And we can fix bugs that were in original games that are there. Real quick, I'm going over, as everyone knows, COVID. Okay, while well, everyone else was kind of scattering and what have you, we, we grew. We grew by leaps and bounds. So kind of go over some of the people you might have heard mentioned not. We've got Doug Duba, he's the president and owner. He's also a pinball collector, so he would love to be in this room right now, but I told him to stay at home, keep working. Um, Sean Wilson's our, our kind of head project manager. He works with Doug hand in hand to make sure everything comes to you guys that's 100% perfect. Um, Sam Zier it works with Atheros Games. He is one of the programmers who works with us. He's literally overhauled our entire pinball operating system during COVID. Um, we've got Butch, everyone knows Butch. I wish Butch was here today, but he sends his love and warm regards. Um, last week we hired Jim Thornton, um, used to work with Jersey Jack Pinball, American. Um, he is taking over another project. 
So we are going to be starting running more than one project at the same time. Uh, just to let you know something that I probably shouldn't say, but we are currently running five projects concurrently, guys. We're not just, our old cycle was we finish a project, we start the next one. We finish a project, we start the next one. We finish a project, we start the next one. I've got five projects going at different stages concurrently right now. So we are here, we are here to tell you that you should see a lot more product and a lot more titles coming out for us every year. Um, that's something we're pushing on very hard. Oh, we got a hand up. How many of those are pinballs? Huh? How many of the five projects are pinball machines? All of them. <laughs> All of them are pinball. Okay. Um, we also hired Joe Schober. He's from down here. Another programmer, we added him onto our team. He's been helping us a lot with a lot of what we're doing right now. Okay, I talked about tech support, guys, earlier, probably before we started. Um, we overhauled our entire tech support department, guys, to support the legacy products, to provide you better support, better answers if you have problems with your games. We hired um, a pinball guy, surprisingly. Um, who literally made his living prior to this as a field service technician. Um, his name's George Bork, he's our service manager. We still have Lloyd that can work that all over pin site, Facebook, everywhere you look, you find Lloyd. How many guys ever know, how many guys know Lloyd? How many, how many times has Lloyd helped you guys out? All right, Lloyd is part of our, our support network, guys. So at any point you can reach out to Lloyd and he will be happy to help you. But I'm gonna, as I'm standing here, guys, we're doing some new things. We're doing um, advanced board replacement service. We're doing, so if you have problems with your play field board, driver boards, things like that, we're here to help you guys. Uh, we're here to support every product we have coming forward. So where are we going? Well, MMR kits are slowly, the parts are starting to come back in. So for you medieval owners, I will have kits available soon. I will have toppers available soon. XL displays are slowly starting to come off the line again. RGB? RGB kits will be making a return this year. Okay. Yeah, you're reading it there. Um, I've, we've heard you guys. And Medieval Madness is coming back. Sometime early 23, we're going to do another run of Medieval Madness. Special edition and classic editions. So you guys can expect that one coming soon. We, we know you guys. How many of you guys want a Medieval that don't own one? Okay. See? Well, Marshall does. JJ, you want some too? Okay, no. I forgot. We're selling you. Um... So we are gonna bring Medieval back, okay? Let's bring us to that one. <laughs> what? I was doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Where's the barbed wire? So, I am going to stand here today and tell you guys, we tried like hell to bring this game to you. That was our plan, was to show you guys Cactus Canyon today. Unfortunately, due to delays, license delays, everything else, the game can't be here. I can't show you images of it, but I can sit here and tell you that the next title up coming out is Cactus Canyon. I can give you guys some details about Cactus Canyon. Okay? Remember how I said we did this whole new pinball operating system thing? This is the first game on the new platform. It has new code in it. It has finished code in it. It has, um, the team we have has worked with some of the original Valley Williams guys that designed the game. And we implemented rules and code that are what they wanted to finish the game. Okay? Um, so it's kind of one of those things we did. <clears throat> so it's got, like I said, new code. And I'll tell you this much, it's fun. Um, 
We'll talk topper. You guys care about toppers? Anyone? Everyone does. What? Okay, everyone cares about toppers. So, um, this will be the first topper ever created that has its own mini game in it. Okay, the topper has more inputs and outputs than an early solid state game and is a mini game that will be coming with it. That is independently, well not independently, but is functionally tied into Cactus Canyon, the topper. Will be tied into it as a mini game, guys. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna kinda tip you off to say it blows attack from Mars away. Okay. It really does. Um some of the other things in this game, let me go backwards here. Let's just leave that logo up. Um, we designed some new technology with this game. We have now not only the pinball operating system, we have designed a ser series of inductive sensors. Um, using modern technology, we got rid of all the read switches in this game, okay, which were flaky at best. Um, you know. <clears throat> So there's a lot going into this game. Of course, upgraded toys. This is probably the most detailed lower arch I have ever seen in a pinball machine. Okay? It really is. Which brings me here. Dealers. All the authorized Chicago gaming dealers are on our website. I encourage you to reach out with them, get on interest lists. How many guys want that game? I mean, okay, we got a few people. Um, so I encourage you guys to get on their on their wait lists or their interest lists, okay? Um, at this time, I'm expecting this game for a formal reveal, a formal announcement in the next four to six weeks. Okay, we are that close. Um, Literally, the game was supposed to leave on Monday for license or approval. One was going for license or approval on Monday. A few were going to come here with me. Assuming I had license or approval by the end of today, I would have had them here with me. Okay? I don't. So, but dealers at this time, they don't know how many LEs they are getting. Um, so, do not take, dealers are not to be taking deposits at this time on the LEs. If a dealer asks you and demands a deposit, please reach out to me directly. Call the office, send an email into Chicago Gaming's customer care. Talk to me about it and I will deal with them, okay? I want you guys safe. I want you guys to know that we stand behind the dealers we have. We hold them accountable for what they do. Um, and at the end of the game day, we're here because we're members of the pinball community and we want to be here. We want you guys to have this game as bad as we want to ship it. That's kind of where we're standing at, is literally, we want you guys to have it. We pushed like hell. I had to pull the plug on this Monday night and go complete change of direction, guys. I'm gonna open this up if any of you guys have any questions, which I'm sure I might see a hand or two. I'm gonna take any questions right now and talk to you guys, just straight up. What do we got back there? Uh, I got a question, the, I know it's in, in previous, we could we are currently working on a program with that right now um, I can say it's an object of debate I do not know if we're gonna do per se serial number matching we might still have the ability for you to get the serial number you request um, but I don't know if we're gonna go serial number matching again you know where it was the early release serial numbers came first because we're trying to push this game so this way you guys can get it faster the serial number matching program took about for monster bash took me about two and a half months to sort through all the requests for serial number matching so and i figure on this one it'll probably take me an extra month and we want to ship this game to you guys as soon as we can you know, but it is something we are looking into other avenues to ensure. Which games do you you own? All three. All three, same 
Nice. Well, we appreciate you on that one, but we are looking at ways to ensure that you can still get that same serial number. So. Curious question, are you working on all three? Well, then technically speaking, you're ineligible on all three because the old serial number matching program applied to first owner, had to register the game as a first owner, yada, yada. The list of criteria was so long it was ridiculous, but I'm sure you bought one of them new in box, somewhere down the line. Was my first new in box. Was, uh, Which one was it? Which yeah. one was your? Uh, I had to get the, the third title, I had to get new in box, because I pushed my first new in box purchase because I wanted the same building. Okay, yeah. well, there you go. Yeah. What's the number? 136, we got 136 here, guys. So at least I know who owns 136. Is there still art on it? Who's the artist that's working on that? Um, well, there's new art on which title? Cactus? Um, well, art is a very simple term. Which art are you referring to? Whatever you're willing to talk about. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you we've upgraded the toys in it. <laughs> okay, I can tell you we've cleaned up a lot of the art in it um, through a variety of different artists. A variety of different pinball artists, things like that. And then the same sculptor who we used to bring you the medieval topper and all that stuff, we've brought him back to help with the toys on this title. So. What's our next one? Are you gonna do three tiers again? And if so, will all tiers have the mini game with the topper? As currently sits, the LE will have the topper. That will be the only one. Um, we, I can't go into details whether the mini game will be available for the other ones. At this time, we're still waiting on license or approval for everything. Are you guys gonna bump the numbers from 1250 to 15 or what do you think how many LEDs are you gonna make um we haven't announced how many so i figured we'd make five <laughs> you know it's good enough to worry about it at least 136 <laughs> no just five <laughs> it's one for me one for doug one for every member on that list bye see you no uh we haven't announced what the production number is going to be yet guys i'm still waiting on final approvals to get through this uh, when we come out i understand everybody wants a game everyone needs a game that's my opinion, everyone needs one. <laughs> everyone needs this title in their basement, but I don't know what the production numbers gonna, are gonna be yet. Yes, ma'am? Any idea on pricing? Um, more than a dollar and less than a million. <laughs> Again, everything's still subject to license approval, so I don't have pricing yet, I don't have numbers as far as how many are gonna be, able, be available. Is the operating system gonna be backward compatible No. The new operating system is on all titles that we use moving forward. Um, in the event we rerun any, hang on, let me rephrase that. When we rerun Medieval, it will be on the original operating system. Okay, any game moving forward will be on the new operating system. You had mentioned new artwork. Does that mean the playfield artwork is gonna be different? Hey, I'd be more than happy to change that, but I think, yeah. so, um, Playfield art is one of those sacred things we never change. Playfield Yeah. Okay. We will so never school, change Playfield art. Toys are going to be different, you're saying? Toys will be different, playfield maybe some new decals, because Cactus Canyon is a interesting title because it was rushed. It was never finished, guys, let's be honest. So we went through, we cleaned up a lot of the things that we saw, and we really brought the Chicago gaming touch to it. You know, I think everyone's going to be happy. Uh, I don't think. I know everyone who's, who gets one is going to be extremely happy with it.